Hello humans, welcome to our first episode of Retro Gamers Half Time. A uh, brand new series that we're doing, uh, literally taking new games, old consoles. Today's the Dreamcast. I know nothing about this game. Um, I, was, I was researching a different game, so I'm a bit lost on this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <dear. laughs> okay. So, blank page. I'm going to leave it up to four, so I'm just going to talk about certain bits and wing it. Okay, was, right, so, Mike covered there, we've got a new show. Um, and as you said, covering new games, old systems. Mm -hmm. Got Mike Langevin, got Forbes London. You've probably catch, uh, caught us before on Two Grumpy Retro Gamers, Two Grumpy 20 something's before that as well. Um, yeah, we're carrying on doing Two Grumpy Retro Gamers alongside doing this. Yeah. Um, this is primary just really to get a bit of exposure on newer games that have come out for your old favourite systems. So it might be games that you're thinking, I've never even seen that before, I didn't even know that game existed. And that is the whole object of this show. Now, we've got the Dreamcast with us today. Um, we're going to be looking at Hughcast release of Ducks, which originally came out in 2009, uh, which would be um, the original edit, which this version that we're playing here is 1.5. Okay. Now, the original version of this game, when it released, um, the, it was, the company was called Hughcast.net, um, and this game was um, developed in conjunction with uh, Contax uh, Limited, right? And the version 1.5, which was the release that came out, which eradicated some bugs in the software, uh, balanced the gameplay out a little bit. Now, that was KTX Software that um, came in and did a little more development work on the game. And this release, I think, was 2013 initially. Right, okay. This version here, mm -hmm. um, in a nice DVD case mimicking the latest style of Dreamcast games that came out in Japan. What you have also, and the reason why we've, we're doing this episode, is this version here, which um, a organisation called Josh Prod did this version. Now there were a select number of games that came out independently for Dreamcast, which they, it was decided that they were going to be released in power style cases, which are the blue jobbies here. Mm. Now, you had a a French company called Rush On Game who uh, handled the distribution of the titles. Okay. So you had this, uh, you had this jobby here. You had uh, the Ghost Blade. Um, you had uh, Neo Geo Port, which is Breakers, which you can find us. We sort of touched a little bit on on our Facebook page. Uh, Alice's Mom's Rescue as well, um, and I believe Rush Rush Rally Racing was another one that came out. In, as part of the same series of these. Right, okay. So it's unknown at this moment in time whether these they'll continue doing these. I mean, I'm not even too sure where they got the PAL casing from. I mm -hmm. mean, that's that's crazy. That is, you know, of the time. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. absolutely stunning, doesn't it? Yeah. In, a, in the PAL case, and you know, you'd expect to go into your local electronic boutique and, uh, you know, see that. So that's, you don't see many intact. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't see many Dreamcast boxes now with <laughs> the hinges unbroken or the teeth yeah. unbroken in the, in the <clears> disc <throat> itself. So, um, yeah, this particular copy we've got here is sealed. And um, we've got this version here, which is the one we put inside the machine itself, and that's a DVD case version, right? And um, and we've got this, we've got a nice manual inside the case itself. Um, in the earlier editions of Dax 1.5, you also got a nice uh, Ghost Blade postcard, okay. which is again, again that came out a little bit later on the Dreamcast. And was also re-released in the Power Star boxes, which we'll cover at a later date, not in this episode. Uh, it'll get its own separate episode. We've also got a nice little sticker inside the box. That's nice. Sweet. You could stick that on the lid of your Dreamcast if you wanted to, or not, whatever you poison. Um, so yeah, it's nicely presented, and it looks pretty darn professional to be honest. Yeah. The game soundtrack is uh, covered by Andre Newman, and you can hear sort of nice sort yeah, of yeah. you know Euro beat to it. It's really quite pleasant. I'm already guessing what kind of game this is by just you know, looking at this, really. And what game do you feel that this is? Well, it's definitely arcades. Yeah. Uh, Side-scrolling shooter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Right, so I'm going to give it a little shot and see. Um, I find this game quite difficult, if I'm being honest with you. Right, okay. Yeah, I do find it very, very difficult. Got a nice sort of VMU icon as well. Ducks, can't see that from here. Right, okay. So it's quite fast-paced to begin with. You've got plenty of enemy ships coming towards you. Um, it gets a bit claustrophobic as well. It builds up into uh, this complex, which um, you have enemies that are firing from the top. You've got rockets heading at you, uh, all sorts of projectiles. It's not quite as fast-paced as some of the other games that have come out on the What's Dreamcast. What's this giant ball right in front of them? 
Uh, that's like your weapon power up upgrade. Right, okay. Yeah, so as you can see, as I'm getting more and more power upgrades, it's um, you know, giving me better sort of weaponry and better range. Yeah. Now it starts getting very, very difficult from this point in. Walk it slow, yeah. yeah. As you can see, things are starting to come flying at me. Yeah. Uh, and there you go, I've lost a life there already. On the first level. Now these games aren't really my forte. I still buy them for the Dreamcast because I like to support it wherever I can. Yeah. Um, and this is one of the slower paced ones, but it certainly has a lot coming at you. Can imagine what the last level was like that. No, yeah, absolutely. I've never, I've never got past <coughs> I think, level three on this game ever. But I was never a massive Ducks fan, I've got to say. When the first version came out, I found it ridiculously hard. Um, yeah, the pacing was definitely off. This version goes some ways to um, improve that, yeah. but it's still quite a, a difficult game. <coughs> wow. You see the projectile there that's following me relentlessly. Yeah. So I don't know whether, you know, if I slow down I can get away from that. So, right, okay. It's still following. Can yeah. I get rid of it? No. So it's, either way, it's going to hit me if, I, <laughs> if I'm not box clever enough. Right, it's very claustrophobic, you're in corridors, there's so much coming on, coming at you. Um, and the aim of the game actually is to get the highest score you can, being the arcade nature of the game, as you said there. Yeah. Um, presentation wise, it's actually top draw for what it is. No, yeah, I'm definitely loving the different colours now. They've, yeah. They've definitely put a lot of effort into this. Yeah, and there's a lot going on on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, you'd expect for 128-bit software that it would, you know, look at least decent, and it does. Hmm. Quite similar to uh, Res that we covered, but obviously like, like an arcade version. Yeah, there, like really. clinically clean graphics, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Any purpose to this game that we know of? Um, I think it's got story. It doesn't yeah. really sort of give you too much away. Open to interpretation. Yeah. Some would say. Oh, so you need to open up things into it. As you can see, yeah, it's starting to get a bit hairy in here now. Oh yeah, definitely. And bearing in mind, this is only the first level as well. There is, um, <coughs> yeah, there's a whole lot to take in straight away. A lot of it comes down to memory. Yeah. And you can see so much going on, even in the background here. Yeah. You're swashing past, so you can tell you're definitely on some kind of ship. So yeah, the artwork's pretty clever on this. Well, I believe it's uh, Rennie Helwig that um, is the CEO of um, QCast, and he's worked with NG Dev Team, which started out making Neo Geo and Dreamcast games. Mm. Uh, they released things like Last Hope and Fast, uh, Fast Striker. So you're on stage two now. Uh, oh, yeah, it's completely different scenery. Again. Yeah, the water's really cool. I mean, um, there was a they did a another version of this game which is called Redux Dark Matters yeah. and it's a very similar concept to this game but the assets and artwork are very different yeah. um, and you know, the water effects are actually better again in that way you can sort of see the ship bouncing off the water yeah. again we'll cover that game on another episode yeah, yeah, what's going on here, I mean you get reflections uh, you get the different textures, obviously one thing under the water above them which is pretty cool Yeah. Um, different layers for your rocky things in the backgrounds. Yeah, it's a very nicely presented game, this. Yeah, definitely. Oh. Again. Projectile came from behind. I'm not sure if there's the ability to shoot backwards. Yeah, I, I was wondering that. I haven't seen enemies behind. So yeah, it's a bit of a cheap pop there. Yeah, can you get that? Oh, probably not. <laughs> not when I'm dead. Not when you're dead, so... See, it's two lives left already, and it's only on stage two. Well, I managed to pick up a life there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, things got very, very hairy under here. Do you go underwater? Um, yes. I do. That's a nice little touch. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right, I mean, let's pause that for a second. Now, as you can see with the menu system, it's kept as clean as possible. Yeah. So you've basically got you know, your resume, your restart there. <coughs> On the main menu, as you can see, it's very much like game start. The rolling demo tells you the techniques and how to play the game briefly. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, the original Ducks release came out uh, July the 17th of 2009 and as I said this version I believe was 2013. So uh, there was a little bit of development between the two versions of the game. Yeah. And Redux Dark Matters I think was uh, a 2012 Kickstarter originally seeking uh, $25,000 of funding 
which it hit in a, in a matter of days. Wow. But the game didn't release until 2012. So, um, yeah. Actually, no, it wasn't. It was 2014. It, it, the yeah. Kickstarter was 2012. 2014 was the game release. Wow. So it does take a long time for these games to be developed. So um, It's quite a long time, though. It is a long time. Now, Dreamcast software does take a very, very long time to be made, yeah. which is pretty crazy, but it is small teams that are working on these games. I guess so, something obviously an older console, they, they would have a small team to do it, obviously, you know, they can't put too much money into it. No, that's it. They yeah. really can. Yeah, they don't, they don't have the resources, yeah. and the development kits, um, a lot of the time are using um, the uh, Callista say, or, uh, OS for the Dreamcast to run the games, you can't use Sega's SDKs. Mm. Yeah. So literally, based in this, this this product on Dreamcast owners, yeah, people that are still into the Dreamcast for all these years. It's, it's this year's gift to them, really. Yeah, isn't it? absolutely. It is yeah. sort of the ultimate tribute to um, keeping the console alive, which is it's really good because um, you know it's, it can't be much profit into it. No, uh, no, no <coughs> um, enough to tick by certainly. Yeah. So, um, but it's diminishing returns with the amount of Dreamcast that are failing each and every year. Yeah. So um, yeah, it is diminishing returns. Now this particular version of the game. You had your DVD case version, you've got your PAL case version, which is the latest version, but you also had like a dual case version, limited edition version of soundtrack. Yeah. So there were multiple different versions. And Hugh was accused really of milking this game. Um, which, whether that's fair, whether that's not, that's the opinion of a lot of the Dreamcast community. A lot of the, a few of the art assets from Ducks were used in a Neo Geo game which is by NG Dev Team, who I mentioned earlier, which is called uh, Razion. Yeah. But that game's not coming to Dreamcast, so as you said there, it does make you wonder how much profit there is in porting games over to Dreamcast, yeah. and maybe that decision was not to put that one across. Yeah. Mm. So um, there is that, and although you are getting a steady stream of Dreamcast releases happening each year, mm -hmm. it's not as buoyant as it used to be. Mm. You know, they used to be getting quite a few games on the radar. Now it's sort of slipping a little bit, where games are, you can, they are getting developed, but at the same time, they're few, a few years away. Things are getting more ambitious. We're getting first-person shooters come into the system. Yeah. You have 3D-based games, and they take time. It takes a long, long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, how do you feel playing that game? Uh, I quite like that. Yeah. Um, I found the difficulty spike is still quite high. Yeah. Now, for a slow-moving side-scrolling shooter map. A game it reminds me very much of is Soul Feast for the Mega CD. Did you yeah. ever play that game? Yeah, you just yeah, a double yeah. pack, uh, Cobra Command, Soul Feast, and yeah, the Power yeah, Mega yeah. CD. Yeah, it reminded me very much of that. Obviously, a much prettier and yeah. artistically clever version. But yeah, I always thought that it reminded me of Soul Feast. Yeah. And um, Soul Feast has a slight advantage over this game because Soul Feast is very accessible, and you can get quite far into the game before it starts posing a challenge. Yeah. This game, on the hand, the challenge is there from the get-go. The ship is quite slow moving. Yeah. But you kind of feel an idiot if you're not progressing further in the game than you should. You think, well, it's I, mean, I don't even see any like storyline at the beginning. You know, you sometimes have it, even if it's just a picture with some writing, just to tell you what's going on. Yeah. You know, you don't get it straight into the game, straight shooting. Yeah. Like, I Why mean, am I shooting these enemies? Sort of thing. Does it say anything on the back of the box? Any story or anything? <coughs> nope. Nothing. No, it's literally, uh, literally just pictures. Yep. No, all you've got on the back of the, the pearl box is. Um, talking about um, uh, it's high resolution bullet spraying action when the instruction Vincent respawns. Yes. So literally what it says it is. Yeah. That's what it is. So yeah. So it's open to interpretation really the story I suppose of this particular <laughs> game. Make up your own. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Absolutely. <coughs> this, could, sure. this could be happening in space right now. Yeah. You never know. It could very well be. So yeah. based on that fact we we're going to review this game as a relatively recent Dreamcast title, yeah. I would say graphically it's going to sit with me as good. Right. So graphically good. Uh, audio very good. Mm -hmm. um, the gameplay I'm going to say is average. Okay. Yeah. And I believe I'm going to go with sort of the packaging style. Okay. It's from good with this one to excellent with this because this looks absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So based on my opinion if you've got an option to get Ducks 1.5, I would say don't necessarily settle with this version. If you can find the PAL box version, if you're in Europe, and you want to add it to your collection of retail releases of Dreamcast, seek out that one. That is absolutely top is. draw quality. Yeah. That is beautiful. Really, really well done. Mm. And um, 
Yeah, who doesn't want the blue power boxes in the Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. They, are, they are. Yeah. If you can keep them in good condition, that, they are. Exactly. I mean, you know, it's, it's so rare to find cases like it's brand new. Yeah. You know, without as you said, like the, the teeth breaking off or anything. Yeah. You know, where you try to put it and it comes off. You're like, oh right, yeah, that's broke. Yeah. Just like the you know, I'll just put it in the back section of the box. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, based on what you were viewing as spectator, how do you feel? No, no, it's excellent actually. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's so good to see retro games come to life again. Yeah, you know, we, we grew up with these games. Yeah. So we've seen it again, uh, brand new game, absolutely excellent. We, you know, as I said, all the graphics was just absolutely top notch. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you can't go wrong with an arcade game. No, that's it. You so know, you it can is, just go straight into it. Yeah, it is what it is. At the end yeah. Of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes with Dreamcast software, you don't really want to have too much story because you want to. You want you're you're cracking up the console to have a quick blast on it, mm. and that works quite well for that. I mean, you're not going to crack up your Dreamcast to play, you know, the likes of Soul Calibur, a bit of Crazy Taxi, um, Power Stone, and things like that, and your various fighters, and then this sits in the ranks with that. You're going to basically purchase this game to unpack your Dreamcast and say, I, yeah, I want to play that, I want to experience this new game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this sort of game you can find, I believe you can still get in various flavours on Hugh Cast's uh, web store. Uh, I believe you might be also be able to find it on playasia.com or you can go with the Rush On Game version, which uh, you have to sign up for an account to be able to order this version yeah. and uh, get your Google Translate on. There are good experiences with PlayAsia. They're very expensive, aren't they? Yeah, especially the postage. Yeah. They work out here. Yeah, yeah, almost scalpers, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. So, all right, I pay, just paid 20 for postage and a game. Why am I paying more for postage? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> and then to be subjected maybe to import charges as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It doesn't make for a good experience. Whereas with this version here, I mean, I bought this with the, I think, the four other games that came out in the, the that set. Yeah. Um, it did cost me a fair old buck. I think it cost me 160 quid for all five. Wow. Um, you know, but that's... You know, the price you pay for having such quality in your collection. Exactly, yeah. This particular version here, I think, was under £30. <coughs> so uh, that represented quite a good value. Oh, right, cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's recommended for us, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll you say you so. Know? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, basically, this has been episode one of so on. Retro Gamers Halftime. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, it's, it's not just Green, Dreamcast we're looking into, it's uh, Mega Drive games as well. Yeah, Mega Drive brand games. new Mega Drive, yeah. Would you, would you believe that? Yeah, so we're going to be looking into that. We're looking into anything new on the Super Nintendo we can get our hands on as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's games for the NES, the Mass system. Don't know whether we'll cover those, they're expensive, but we'll certainly give it a good shot. Um, you know, we want to do shameless plugs to anybody who is developing new retro games as well. So we'll take on samples and demos as well, yeah. give them a try. So um, you know, if you're watching this and you're developing a new game for a retro console, we'd love to cover it. Yeah, yeah. We would love to cover it. Yeah. And uh, you know, anybody that's watching this right about now, it'd be great if you could catch us on the Two Grumpy Retro Gamers as well, which is currently, as we stand, on episode 25. 25 at the moment. Yes. Yeah. We're working on 26. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, let's just take one second. Yeah, I mean, these sort of games, these sort of arcade games, where do you usually find them? What to buy that new now? Well, you know, any any sort of games that comes out like this. Yeah. Where do you find them? Well, you, the the problem is, is you can't find these in your normal bricks and mortar you stores. You find them on mobiles, mobile yeah. games. Yeah. You know, and I'm not really a mobile game fan. No, no, I must admit, I I don't play games on mobile. Yeah. It's got to be the original method. Exactly. Uh, what so it was designed for. Bring it back onto a console, a great console like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely perfect. Yeah, it's definitely a thumbs up for you on this one. Yeah, thumbs up for me too. Yeah. In which case, we'll catch you on the next episode. Yeah, see you next game. <laughs>